Welcome to the future of spelling. My name is Sir Link a lot, as I like to link a lot. Linking is a fun and easy way to remember things by trying to find a connection. A link. See what I did there? And it is really good for spelling. It is so good for spelling. Now, in each lesson, I talk about a particular linking technique or a theme. But before I do that, I've got some shout outs. Some shout outs, some shout outs, some shout outs, some shout outs, shout outs, shout outs. So the first one up is a brother and sister combi. First one up is from Phoebe, nine year old Phoebe, 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 for the spelling of excellent, which I covered in a previous lesson, but I like what she's done. I think it's really good work, excellent work, and beautifully delivered. She's very, she's a good, very good teacher. We love Phoebe a lot. Over to Phoebe's genius. Excellent. The word cell is inside excellent, as well as Ellen. And an X meaning never. Ellen will never go in a jail cell. Excellent work. I had to. Really good, Phoebe. I'm very, very impressed. That's a really, really good link. And beautifully presented. X means never, no. Then cell, prison cell, and Ellen. Putting these all together. It's really, really good. Really, really impressed. From a nine-year-old. Brilliant. You got yourself a badge and a pencil. Now, her younger brother, Owen, thought, I'm having some of this. I'm not having that. I'm not being upstage by my sister again. So he thought of a link, six-year-old Owen, the big O, for the spelling of the word kind, because it could begin with a C, not a K. It could be a kicking cur. So it could be a curly cur, not a kicking cur. And also it could be K-I-N-E-D. Quite easily, like fine. If you got uh, got fine, I got a fine given to me, a, a penalty. Find F-I-N-E-D. So this is Owen's reply. Kind. Kicking is not deserved. Very good. Kicking is not deserved. The first letter of each word. It's called an acrostic. It is deserved if you're a football, then it's well deserved. Of course. Other than that, obviously not. Very good. You've earned yourself a badge and a pencil there, Owen. And you two are clearly a pair of linkers. Keep them coming. I'm very impressed. One more before we finish off the shout outs. From last week's show, uh, the Selink the, uh, a Lot Live Friday at 5 on my uh, Insta channel. Uh, we had lots of fun last uh, last week and the winner got uh, the best linker overall, the best effort, uh, won a t-shirt. And the winner was last week, it was, I think his mum got involved as well in the whole thing. It's a very much a family thing, but uh, Finley earned the shirt. Eight-year-old Finley won the t-shirt and here he is. Go Finners, in all his splendor. Good boy. Well done, Finley. Got yourself a t-shirt. And also, they won a couple of badges. I think I'm pretty sure they won a couple of badges. Very good work. Excellent. So do tune in at five tomorrow afternoon. So link a lot live. Friday at five. You know it's a goodie. So, today's lesson is all about poo and bum. Poo and bum. All the animations are to do with poo and bum. The words are not poo and bum stuff. I wanted to a link to, uh, to poo and bum. But it's very, very childish time. Very, very childish. If you're not into being childish, then don't watch this. If you love being childish, you'll love it. It's great. All the links are to do with poo, bum, or woofies, or, or just silly childish stuff. We've also got to, today as well, Lady Lex coming on. We're talking about some pooey stuff there and farty, windy stuff. Hey, We love it. So, the first one up is desperate. Desperate or desperate or desperate. Difficult word. Tricky word. Over to my link. Desperate. The name Des is next to the word P 
which has got the word rat inside it. Des the rat is desperate for a pee. Squeak, 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 squeak. Desperate Des, desperate Des, squeak. Good one. Someone else said to me, I think it's pretty good. Des, as per usual, ate anything he could because he was known as Desperate Des for a reason. Des, as per usual, ate Des per rate, which I think is pretty good. As long as you know the term as per usual, I think that's pretty clever. I like that one. But you pick the one that works, of course. If they don't work, think of your own and let me know what you got. Come on, share your pearl of wisdom. So, the next one up is three for the price of one. Do, don't, done. Do, don't, done. Now, do, that's do, isn't it? You know, it should be do, or like do, like uh, go, go and so. Do, I mean, do is not a given. I mean, it's, yeah, it's pretty straightforward, I think, but you may put D double O. Don't is tricky, don't. And done, that's done, you know, tricky stuff. Here is the first of one of my really, 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 Really childish links. With many more to come. Whee! Do, don't, and done. Do is inside the word don't, which is short for do not, as well as the word done. It is also in dog, the name Don, and do do's. Don't do your doo-doos there, Don, you naughty dog. Don't. Ah, oh, now you've done it. <laughs> oh, Don. Stop it, Don. Stop it. It's not funny. Stop. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> he loves it. Old Don loves it. Don't do it, Don. Don't. Ah, oh, now you've done it. You've done it. Anyway, more of those to come. The next one up is... Opportunity. Tricky word. Opportunity. Opportunity. Two Ps. The O after the two Ps. Opportunity. Oppo. Opportunity. The R. Not easy. A tricky word. Okay. Tricky. Difficult. Hard. Over. To my link! To my link! Opportunity. There are two P's followed by an O and an R. Ha ha! This dog has spotted an opportunity to make a funny word. <laughs> Don loves it. He loves it! Poop! Poop's a great word. We love the word poop. It's a good one. The flip letters of O-P, uh, poop to get O-P-P-O. And the R is the tail. Don't forget the R, very important. Is it in? You know it is. And also the word unity is at the end. Unity. You could say also seize, uh, seize the opportunity. It's the passport to your success. Passport. If you shorten the word pass to P, P-port, it could be short for passport, I'm making that up. P-port it's the passport to your success, the opportunity. P-port, P-P-O-R-T, is inside the word opportunity. There could be others out there. It could be any. Think of links. Get on it. And if it works for you, if it does work, it works. I can't say you're wrong. And let me know if it's a goodie. And if so, you get a shout hat and a badge and a pencil. Good old Don. Don loves it. The next one up is... It's two of them. Mouse and house. Mouse and house. There's a small word at the end here. Let's put you on the clock. Here we go. Did you see it? Hopefully you did. If so, then put it into a sentence. This is what I've done. Again, very childish. Here we go. Childish, childish. We love being childish. Over to my link. House and mouse. The word use is at the end of both of these words. 
Does the mouse in the house use the loo to poo? Stop it, Selinkalot. Stop it. Stop being so childish. No, I'm going to carry on for the whole episode. For the whole of my life, actually. Yeah. Mouse. The word use inside mouse and the word use inside house. Does the mouse in the house use the loo to poo? Is it in? <whistles> Splash. It's now out. Oh, please. Enough. Enough of this silliness. No. The next one up is... Oh. <laughs> Surprise. Surprise. Yeah, this one. Surprise. That first R does surprise people. So, hey, there's an R there. S-U-P very often. There's an R there, tricky. In fact, let's, uh, let's, can you see, let's put it on the clock here. Think of a word. You may have seen this one before. Some of these I've repeated. I have definitely done some of these over the last two, three months. Uh, but I thought I'd just show them again as a group of poo and bum stuff. Why not? We love it. Um, think of a word ending U-R-P and it's next to another word there. A word ending U-R-P, a very short word and a word next to it. Can you see that as well? Here we go. Oh. Did you get one? Did you get it? Over to my link. Woo! Surprise. When a burp rises, burp. you get surprises. Burp. Oh, indigestion, a bit of water. Works well. And also for hiccups, having a full glass of water slowly, tremendous one. That is a good one. There are some old wives' tales out there that are rubbish, but that's a really good one. Let's put this back to... There you go. We love it. Most excellent. When a burp rises, burp, you get surprises. Burp, rise. If you thought of the word burp next to the word rise, excellent. Good work. I'm very, very impressed. Tremendous stuff. Is it in? Burp. It's out. Oh, that will do. Please. The next one up is... Behind. Behind. Not easy. The hind could be... Be hind. Be hind. Be hind. I mean, come on. Over. To my link. Behind. The I-N-D of the word wind finishes off this word. Wind can sometimes come from behind you. What? Sir, smelly, sir, poo. That's a smelly one, sir. Poo. The next one up is thorough. Really, really hard word, thorough. This is a look at that. Look at that word. Thorough. I mean, this is thaw, thaw, ruh, and then ruh. I mean, come on. Madness. Madness. Over to my very childish link. Thorough. The two O's are a pair of eyes, and at the end of the word, you will see a sound of disapproval. Take a thorough look at this. Ugh. Not again, Don. Please. Stop doing poos everywhere. Stop it. What are you eating these days? Far too much, obviously. Take a thorough look. Thorough. To be really sort of, you know, make sure you really, really look a proper good hard look. It's like a thorough look. Ugh. Is it in? Oh, you know that one already. The last word today is... I had to do it. Well, not literally. <laughs> Diarrhea. 
Yeah, come on, diarrhea. Look, that middle bit. R-R-H. O as well. I mean, you can hear diet. There's going to be maybe an, an, an R there, but two R's in... What? 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 Over to my link. Diarrhea. The first letter of the following words are inside the middle of this word. Oh, runny. Oh, runny. Oh, help. Oops. Runny, runny, help, oops. You know that's a good one. That's called an acrostic, the first letter of each word, which is a brilliant technique, but it's overused. I know one, someone said once, um, dash in a real rush, hurry or else accident, which is fine, but that's long. It's more to remember. Only use it on the bit that's tricky, that's hard, or in this case, soft in the middle. Uh, also, I spotted uh, diarrhea sounds like the two words dire. Rear, D I R E, then R E A R. So if you've got diarrhea, you've probably got a diarrhea. Is it in? You know it is. I'm very happy with that. And also in this lesson, I'm very excited to say that Susie's story for diarrhea is brilliant. It is just, it's one of my faves. Muscle is well, definitely top three, but that's right up there as well. And it happens to be childish, that's probably why I like it. Uh, right, talking of Susie's stories, we have today in the show Lady Lexicographer. How are you today, Lady Lex, in this very childish uh, atmosphere of poo and bum? Are you cool with that? Poo wee bum. Yes, I am absolutely fine. Um, I have kids, so link a lot, so um, I'm used to all of these. Um, lots of entertaining stories and farts. Don't forget farts. Of course, of, of course. Or woofies or wind, wind or my mother used to call it. And we called it for years. This I cannot believe this got through us. Six children. Windy pop. <laughs> windy pop. Yes, windy pops. That's what we call them. Did um, you? <laughs> yes. And tramps, uh, trouser burps. Um, in my dictionary, Selin Clock, when I was at school, you know, everyone looks up the rude words in the dictionary, don't they? And when I looked up fart in the dictionary, as of course I did, um, it was defined as a minor explosion between the legs. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Very, so descriptive. And Windy Pop is so descriptive as well. It's so funny. So, so funny. Right now, can you, do you have any words that have got a uh, a pooey, poo or bum, farty, woofy, Windy Poppy, uh, trumping trouser, what was it, trouser what? Trouser burp. The trouser. Do, do you have any of those that have got, uh, words that have got origins of, of that sort of nature? Yes. I do. Well, particularly the windy versions. Um, so there are lots of words from other languages, meaning fart, that have crept into English. So take the partridge, the bird. Um, that actually comes from a French uh, word, pété, uh, meaning to break wind. And it's thought that the sound of the partridge's wings when it takes flight, must, it must have reminded somebody of a fart. And so they named the partridge after, after the trouser burp, which is a bit strange. Um, then you've also, oh, by the way, there was a French fart artist called Monsieur Petoman. Um, you can look him up and he actually um, made a whole career of farting on stage and I think there was one surviving video but sadly you can't hear anything uh, it was it was a long time ago but anyway so that was that was partridge there's also to fizzle if something fizzles out originally it meant to break wind quietly uh, that's what fizzling is and a feisty if you describe someone as feisty they're um you know they're quite so they can be quite quick to being quite cross um maybe a tiny bit aggressive sometimes a bit sassy um that goes back to a very old english word meaning a windy lap dog so a windy little dog that would sit on someone's lap and snarl and probably break wind that's where feisty so it's a windy dog feisty it's a windy dog it was called what was called a fisting hound and um and eventually it became feisty yes very good that's that's tremendous but but partridge the yes. the, the wings made the a fart noise but surely yes. that can't be the only bird that makes that noise with those wings surely 
No, but although I think there is quite a distinctive churring of a partridge's wings when it does take flight. I mean, to me, it's never sounded like, I mean, I haven't heard it very often, but it's never really reminded me of a windy pop. But it must have reminded someone a bit like, do you remember those muscles? The, the muscles and someone somewhere thought, oh, when someone flexes their biceps, it looks like a little mouse crawling underneath. Um, so, yeah, people have strange imaginations. What can I say? But a lot of English words go back to those very imaginations. Good one. What was that verb you used when you said, cheer, you say cheering, what was it? Churring, churring. C-H-I-R-R-I-N-G. Uh, what, I don't know that word. Sorry, what is that? Ah, well, it's a kind of specific noise, uh, really. You'll have to look up the noise of a partridge's wings to get what churring is. Do you want me to? I always have the dictionary here, as you know. Um, so I can look it up for you. Yeah, yeah OK. It's, so it's, it's, it's on a matter pier, by the sound of things, to, like whirr and stuff. Yeah. Um, yes, it probably is. Let me have a look for you. So, so you've, got two, you've got two turtle doves and a far heart in a pear tree. Is that... <laughs> That is pretty much the case. Right, um, for anyone who doesn't know me, I'm just shifting this so I can actually look at my screen. Um, yes, for anyone who doesn't know me, I have the dictionary more or less open the entire day in front of me, and I love it because I can get lost on it. Yes, yeah, so it says, particularly of an insect, to make a prolonged, low, trilling sound. So grasshoppers can chirr, um, and crickets can chirp as well. You're right, it's imit imitative, so it is onomatopoeic. And yeah, I think it is just applied also to um, partridge's wings, or at least I've just applied it to partridge's wings. Okay, <laughs> I mean, um, is chirrup from the same family of words? Yeah, right? they're, all, they're all from the same idea of trying to reproduce the sound. Good one. Now, if this guy's called a fart artist, surely he's called a fartist, yeah? Fartist, that'd be good. No, it's called a flatulist, actually. From flatulent. Fart artist. Fartist. You've got to go with that. Come on. You've got okay, to. <laughs> yes, yeah, fartiste. I like it. To, to make it yeah, something very grim, quite attractive. I like it. I'm a fartiste. Whatever, mate. You do fartist. farts. All right. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Um, great stuff. I love the there's origins of words from pooey bum stuff. We're all over that one. So let's show the, uh, the viewers two wonderful Susie stories. And very childish, obviously. Manoeuvre, meaning a carefully planned scheme or action, was once all about using our hands. At its heart is the word manus, the Latin for hand, and the French word oeuvre, meaning work. That manus also gave us manual, operated by hand, manacles, handcuffs, manipulate, to handle, manicure, a treatment for your hands and nails, and manuscript, something written by hand. It also gave us manure, dung, which farmers often clear away with a hand-held spade. Poo! Diarrhea is a Greek word. D-I-A means through, and the R-R-H derives from a word meaning flow. So, diarrhea means to flow through. <laughs> Makes sense? By the way, that was a raspberry, and raspberry comes from the rhyming slang raspberry tart fart. To flow through, diarrhea, to fl <laughs> Yep, that makes sense. That's brilliant. I, I, that's one of the best, to flow through. <laughs> what should we call it? Let's call it that, it? flow through. Brilliant. Also, um, with uh, diarrhea, um, Lady Lexicographer said raspberry tart Fart. Now that is Cockney rhyming slang. What can you tell us? I'm sure it's probably a, a show of its own, but what can you tell us about Cockney rhyming slang and the impact it's had uh, on the English language? Yes, it's it's fascinating subject. I mean, slang itself is really interesting because, um, you know, as most kids know and most teenagers know, you use slang um, in your kind of in-group and the whole idea is that no one else can understand it, particularly parents. Um, and Cockney rhyming slang wasn't too different. So it um, it probably arose in about the 19th, 19th century, so the 1800s. And it's thought that it was a secret code amongst um, what they called costermongers. So these were people who would sell fruit and vegetables at markets on the streets of cities like London. And 
it's thought that maybe some of this fruit and some of these vegetables, perhaps they weren't always particularly legitimate. They'd kind of, you know, they might have fallen off the back of a lorry. And um, so they had this kind of coded slang with which to communicate with each other. And it's thought that's how rhyming slang originated. But because it's quite fun and it's based on, it's, you, you have to really work at some of them to kind of unpick it. So um, I don't know, for example, you don't have much of a barnet, Sir Lenkelot, if you don't mind me saying, but... Oi! <laughs> well, you have, a, you have a lovely head, you just don't have a barnet on it. Um, but barnet, you have to work out if you have to know barnet fair, um, this is a place in London and that rhymes with hair. So sometimes you really have to unpick it a lot. Um, and it was such fun that people started to think, oh, I'm going to have, you know, some fun with this too. So they started to create their own words. And in the 20th century, um, and even now, people will use what they call mockney. So this isn't um, original Cockney rhyming slang. It's much more recent. And it uses the names of celebrities primarily to come up with, with um, some kind of code. So, for example, if you're going for a couple of Britneys, you're going for a couple of Britney Spears beers. Or you might have heard, it's all gone a bit Pete Tong. Poor Pete Tong. Um, it rhymes with wrong. So if everything's gone wrong, it's it's all gone Pete Tong. So you have to work at it. And that's why I love rhyming slang. So it's still alive and well. It's particularly alive and well in Australia, which is great, where a cobra shower is a flower. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and so it goes on and hopefully it will last forever. But it's as celebrated in London as the Routemaster Red Buses and the Black Taxis. Great stuff. So if you get a bunch of uh, Cobras in Australia, don't be frightened off by it. Exactly. Right, brilliant, excellent. <laughs> now with raspberry, now raspberry's a good one, raspberry tart fart. To blow a raspberry, therefore, yes. that has got into the dictionary, not with like apples and pears. If you put apples in the dictionary, it's not, it wouldn't mean anything. But raspberry in its own, I, it's, I've seen it's in the dictionary, to raspberries, so therefore, currently rhyming slang, the first part of it, not the whole thing, has got into the dictionary. I was wondering if, I know yonks is in the dictionary because it's donkeys, ears, ears, yonkies, they've, they've then sort of done a sort of a spoonerism and made it yonks, and it's got into the dictionary. So I was wondering, if, do you know if any other words have actually made it into the dictionary with a second meaning? I think that's a really good one. I think Scooby will be in in quite a few dictionaries. So if you say I haven't got a Scooby, that's Scooby Doo clue. Um, so and you're right about Yonks. I'll have a think. Maybe if I can think of some more uh, for the next lesson, I'll I'll, um, I'll let you know. Okay. Um, also, raspberry tart. You know, to rasp that rasping sound you make to rasp or with a tool and stuff. Have they chosen raspberry tart? They, it could have been like, you know, I've just done a treacle, I've just done a, a blueberry, I've just done an apple. Uh, they chose raspberry, which coincidentally, rasp, is that just luck? They, they sound... Yeah. Who knows? Who knows was the, who was the first person to use it? Um, impossible to tell. It might have been there, or it might have just been as random as, you know, could have been strawberry, could have been gooseberry, could have been any of this lot. Yeah, fair enough, fair cool. Okay, great stuff. Um, we'll, uh, I, I'm very keen to have another lesson about childish things, poo and bum. So I, I look forward to the next time The next time you come onto the show. And thank you for, thank you for playing ball with us. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled that you like poo and bum and fart stuff as well. It's great. Always. Brilliant. Thanks for coming on today, Lady Alex. We love you and we'll talk to you the next time. Take care, everyone. We do love Lady Lex and the childish side of Lady Lex in particular. So, that end of the lesson for all things pooey and bummy and smelly and woofy and trouser burpy and windy poppy and all sorts of stuff. If you've got any good links, let me know. You can win yourself a badge. This one here, the CIA. have got special agents who hunt down criminals in action or they're trying to stop crime in America. We love that one. Do you believe it? Or is it a big fat lie? Is there life out there? Do you believe it? Or is it a lie? Lions are the believe. And of course, you've got the man himself, old Sir Link a lot. We love Linky. Tomorrow afternoon on my Insta channel is the old Q&A session, also known as an Amma Ask Me Anything. Five o'clock. Or should we say, Sir Link a lot live. Friday at five. Is it in? You know it is. You can win yourself. One of these t-shirts. Come on. We love those t-shirts. The last thing I say to you is, the name of the app is Salinkalot. Is it in?
Whoa. You know it is. Poo!